This is Sid Roth saying, I have a vision. Now is the set time to blow the trumpet in Zion. Shalom, Mishpacha. Shalom, family. Mishpacha is a Hebrew word. It means family. We're the Mishpacha, the family with a Jewish heart, made up of Jewish and non-Jewish people that are one new man and Messiah. Something brand new. Something that's never existed before. It's the true body of Messiah. Getting ready, Mishpacha, to blow the grandest shofar. The grandest trumpet in Zion. We want everyone everywhere to hear the good news. We want everyone everywhere to be red hot for the Messiah. My guest by way of telephone is Michelle Cohen. I'm speaking to her at her home in Ventura, California. Michelle was born in England. She was 22 when she found out it was hidden that she was Jewish because there was so much anti-Semitism. She was trying to be protected, but something woke up within her. Although she was raised in a non-religious home, uh, Jewish or Christian, it just wasn't religious at all, she uh, was a very successful dancer, went to a top performing arts school in England, got involved in the dark side, in the occult, literally could see demons, wanted out, didn't know how to get out. She was literally a prisoner. And one day, she doesn't even know why, she just cried out to God. She said, Jesus, if you're real, help me. And God heard that prayer. She wound up in America, went to a church in California called Church on the Way, Jack Hayford's, and literally the Spirit of God came upon her. She got set free. She experienced a peace like she'd never experienced in the New Age or the occult. Did you feel clean, Michelle? Oh, I felt so clean. I felt like, uh, just like the Bible says, that I was a new creation. And you, you heard a voice of God, and, vo- and the, the voice said from the inside, you are home. home. You made Jesus your Messiah and Lord. Yes. But even after you did that, I'd like to say everything turned out wonderful, but you began to run out of money. That's right. I come from uh, England to America planning to go back, planning to go back to my uh, choreography and dance teaching work in London. And as I developed a wonderful relationship with the Lord, I knew God was telling me, you need to stay here. You need to call them, tell them you won't be back. I've got something else for you. And it was during that time that uh, my husband and I, Jeffrey Cohen, and I were beginning to get together. We were uh, in prayer meetings together. We were studying the Bible together. And it got to the point where I had run out of money. I had no plane ticket back. I had uh, no work visa with which I could stay in the United States. And I prayed and fasted for three days. And the Lord spoke very clearly to my heart, trust me. And about two weeks after that, Jeff asked me to marry him. (laughs) Well, with that, I think I have to talk to Jeffrey Cohen. Could you put him on the phone? Sure, here he is. Hi. Uh, hi, Jeff. Now, you, you, were, you were in the room, so you heard what Michelle said. And uh, the way uh, your, your read on it, she was doing real spiritual things, praying and fasting. Your read was when you saw a woman that was as excited about Jesus and not ashamed of her faith as you were, you figured she's got to be the one. And then uh, both of you had a, a very interesting, open vision and the thing that's so amazing is you both had it at the same time. Tell me about it. Well, there were two experiences we had with the Lord. One of them was in England when we saw, um, we were actually sitting in the basement of my wife's dad's uh, home in London. And uh, both of us saw the hand of God. And he saw the world. I'll just tell you what I saw, you know, because she saw the same thing. But I didn't know she was seeing it at the same time until afterwards. Um, I just saw the world in God's hand. And I thought, wow, it's not so big after all. Because it just fit in his hand so easily. His hand was so big. And then God came and he opened up my chest. And there's no way to explain it except this is what happened. It was a vision. He opened up my chest and he took the world and he placed the world inside my heart. And ever since that time, I've had such a burden for every tribe 
every nation, every tongue. And what happened after that experience with both of us is that a spirit of travail and intercession came on us for the gospel to go into nations where it's never been before. Places like Albania, and where the, the Iron Curtain was still up at that time, and we began to pray that God will pull down those walls, those Iron Curtains and, and those walls that are stopping the gospel from going into various nations. And of course the walls did come down after that. And I'm not saying it's only because of our prayers, but I know that that, that played a part of it. Uh, now, I'm, I'm curious. You said Michelle had the same vision? At the same time. Can, can I speak to her for a moment? Yeah, certainly. Okay. Now, Michelle, you tell me what your vision was at the same time as Jeff. It was exactly that, um, that we had a heart for people everywhere, having come to... I mean, did he tell you what he was seeing and then you saw it? No, not at all. We were having a time of prayer. Um, this was different uh, from other times of prayer in that as we just sat before the Lord, his presence came. Um, it's not always like that when you pray. Sometimes you're just sitting and you're just having wonderful fellowship with the Lord or you're praying. But this was different. The room filled with the glory of God. And we began to um, just come into a very deep place of prayer in the Lord. And I saw exactly what Jeff saw. We discussed it afterwards. We couldn't believe we'd seen the same thing. The world in God's hand, realizing it's not so big. These people all over the world can be reached because we've had such a, an incredible experience of coming to know our Messiah, coming to know Jesus personally, coming to know that he's the one that takes away all of our sins, that he's the answer. We wanted to be able to tell everybody everywhere, and we still do. And God put the world in our hearts. And uh, since that time, he's given us much opportunity to go. Now, now you had a second vision, which, again, the same things happened to you. Uh, this this is really fascinating. Tell me about it. Well, we were in South Africa now, and again, just coming to uh, to the Lord in prayer, just as we would do every day, just coming to sit before the Lord. And again, said all I can say is it was a sovereign visitation from the Most Holy God. God uh, came comes in peace. God comes with joy. God comes in different ways. But this visitation from God was a the God of holiness came into our apartment building in Johannesburg, South Africa. It was so incredible to experience his holiness. We fell on our faces to the floor. We felt like um, 200 or more blankets were being laid upon us. The weighty glory, the presence of God was so great upon us. And we began to weep and weep and cry out for the for the people of the world, for the people of South Africa and, and all the nations of the world, for the Jewish people, because Sid, when God came in his holiness, we had a vision of the very last days on this earth, the days when there would be those who wouldn't be ready to go with the Messiah when he comes again. And uh, that has been had incredible impact on our lives. It was really a commission, I believe, from the Lord to go everywhere that he would send us to share the good news. Did did he indicate that many people might not be ready? You know, he said he did, and that was what was so um, awful and dreadful. The Bible talks about the coming of the dreadful day of the Lord, the, the terrible day of the Lord, and I believe that it's called that because of the horror in people's hearts when they realized that they needed to get right with God, but it was too late. And that is what we saw when God visited us like that in Johannesburg. We saw that there would be those who weren't ready. And we sensed the horror of people who would say, I've missed it, it's too late. Jesus has come, he's gone, the trumpet has been sounded. He's come to gather up those who know that they belong to him those who are born again, those who have the Holy Spirit in them, he's gathered them up, and now he's gone, and it's too late, and tribulation begins to come on the face of the earth. I wonder if I could speak to your husband once more, put Jeffrey on, because, you see, at the same time that Michelle had this visitation, Jeffrey had this visitation. Now, did you hear the same thing as Michelle, or did you hear something different, Jeff? No, it was exactly the same thing. It was really, it was God supernaturally just opening our eyes and just, there's, there's no way to explain it except that it was revelation from God. 
Basically, revelation means God showed you something. He revealed something to you. And I just saw, in fact, I thought God was going to come at that moment. That's what I thought was happening. I thought we were just about to be raptured out of the earth right at that moment because his coming was so imminent. It was so real to me, the, the, the immediacy of God's coming and how short the time is. Now, you said you were pinned to the ground. Uh, yes. Could you have gotten up if you wanted to? No, no, no ways. Absolutely no ways. And the same thing with Michelle? Yes. How long were you pinned to the ground? Probably, obviously I didn't time it, but I would say four to six hours at least. That's a pretty strong thing. God wanted to really get that point across to you. Very much so. Very much so. Do you believe he's coming soon, though? Absolutely. I, you know, I, I don't know the day or the hour. Nobody knows that. But that he's coming soon, I have no doubt. And, and for some, he's coming so soon that their last day could be tomorrow. It might, might not even be the rapture, but that their last day could be tomorrow. So for them, he really is coming soon. And so that's what God's placed on my heart, is that he's coming soon for everybody, and we need to be ready. And, and you know what I believe, Jeff? Yeah, that God's people must demonstrate God's kingdom on earth. So, that, I mean, that's the way Jesus promoted the fact the kingdom of God have come on earth. That's the way Jesus grabbed the attention of the unsaved people. And you've prayed for the sick. Uh, tell me one sick person you've prayed for that has been healed. Well, when I was ministering uh, at that time, it was called, uh, they were called the homelands in South Africa. I was ministering in the trans and uh, we're actually in a mountainous area. And uh, we had ministered during the whole week, but we said we weren't going to pray for people during the week. But on Sunday, if anybody was sick, that they should come and we were going to pray for all the sick people on Sunday. And I can honestly say before the Lord that that day, that every single person that I prayed for on that day was instantaneously healed. But the only one that you could actually see physically, because people would say, well, I'd say, what's the problem? I'd say, I've got a sore back or... I've got a you know, pain in my leg or whatever, and they say it was gone. But there was one you could visibly see. There was a lady who was blind, and she was about three people back in the prayer line. And I was kind of secretly hoping that she wouldn't ask me to pray to receive her sight, because, you know, we have so little faith. I was hoping she would say maybe she's got a, you know, maybe her toes hurt or something like that. Because <laughs> you can't fake it, you know, when someone's blind, they're either going to see or they're not. But God gave me a gift of faith when it came time to pray for her. I said, what do you need? And she said, well, I need to see. And her eyes were smoked over. They were glazed over. They were, she was 100% blind. She wasn't what we call legally blind in America, which means you can really, really see, but you can't drive a car. She was absolutely blind. She couldn't walk without holding on to her daughter. And uh, God gave me a gift of faith. And he said to me, yes, I'm going to heal her, but you need to put spit on her eyes, but you need to ask her first. So I asked her daughter, and she translated and uh, she, I said, is that okay? And she said, of course. But what's a bit of spit on your eyes when you're blind if you're going to be healed, you know? You she spit was, on her eyes? Yeah. Ay vey, hold that thought. Mishpocha, he has chutzpah. He's got nerve. And God wants you to have Holy Ghost nerve. And that's why we're offering this week David Hogan's teaching, Faith to Raise the Dead. Literally, he has prayed 21 dead people back to life. You need an injection of faith. You need to. The devil has boxed you in, and it's time that you be set free and do the works of Jesus. We're asking $18 postage paid. I urge you to call her right today for the video, Faith to Raise the Dead. If you would like to receive a complimentary copy of our bi-monthly teaching newsletter, cassette catalog, or information about becoming Mishpocha, write to me, Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Or call our order-only line, 1-800-548-1918. To place a credit card order, call anytime, one 800 548 1918. For all other calls, the number is 912 265 2500. That's 912 265 2500. For a cassette tape of this week's broadcast, send $5 to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Look us up on the web www.sidroth.org. That's www.sidroth.org.